The massive depression in the ground which you are looking at is a caldera which formed during the climactic eruption of Crater Lake approximately 7,700 years ago in Oregon. While spectacular, this more than 2,000 foot deep caldera is not the only similar edifice in the United States as a surprisingly high number of large calderas exist in Alaska. These include calderas at Mount Katmai, Akmok, Aniakchak, the Fisher Caldera, Black Peak, Veniaminov, and a little known volcano known as Ugashik Pulik. As per the name, the Mount Pulik volcano represents the more recent stratovolcano in the complex, while the Ugashik volcano represents the older of the two, containing a 3 mile wide and 2.65 mile long caldera, which is 880 feet deep. This caldera is quite scenic, often being snow covered, although it is clearly older than many of the other mentioned calderas within Alaska, as its rim shows a higher degree of erosion. The major volcanic eruption which formed this caldera likely occurred 40,000 years ago and was comparable in size to the 1991 eruption of Mount Pinatubo, registering in on the volcanic explosivity index as a 6. However, the Ugashia caldera and the lava domes within it are not the only interesting aspect of this volcanic complex. Its northern and western sectors contain more than 1,000 small hills and mounds, some of which are more than 20 feet in height. These mounds are classified as hummocky terrain and owe their existence to a catastrophic collapse and directed blast at the volcano which was somewhat similar to that witnessed at Mount St. Helens in 1980. And the Pulik volcano has been the site of two historical eruptions during the 1800s, while the Ugashik volcano is one of the few locations in Alaska to have geologically recently erupted rhyolite lava. For context, this remote volcano is located on the Aleutian Peninsula, far southwest of Anchorage, where it is 66 miles south of the city of King Salmon. Although the exact age of when this volcano began to form due to subduction of the Pacific Plate underneath the North American Plate is unclear, we do know that it had erupted at least once by 171,000 years ago. During the early phase of this volcano, a group of overlapping lava domes and a medium-sized volcanic cone was slowly constructed out of both andesite and dacite lavas in variably explosive and effusive eruptions. Two peaks were constructed during this period. Eventually, a large and volatile rich magma chamber grew underneath the volcano, allowing for a powerful plenian eruption to occur, which caused its large caldera to form 40,000 years ago. During the next 28,000 years, four dacite and rhyolite composition lava domes erupted within the caldera, creating gray colored block edifices. A fifth dome, aka the northeastmost one, may have then erupted around 10,000 years ago. And only after all this had occurred did the Pulik volcano begin to grow. However, it at first primarily erupted less silica rich basalt and basaltic andesite lavas. After frequent cone building eruptions, a powerful lateral eruption occurred, causing several hundred million cubic meters of rock to slide to cover an area of 29 square miles. Another smaller lateral blast and collapse likely occurred around the same time, which was directed to the north and northwest. Several flank andesite lava flows thereafter erupted to the north-northwest and a lava dome grew within the summit of the collapsed crater. The Alaska Volcano Observatory notes that at least six Holocene eruptions occurred at this volcano, the last of which was in 1852, although more likely occurred to quickly build this stratovolcano in only the last 11,000 years. While a future eruption at some point from Mount Pulik in the next 10,000 years seems highly likely, the same cannot be said of the Ugashi caldera as it appears far less active. The good news is that assuming Pulik is the source of future eruptions, and due to the nearest town being Pilot Point, 45 miles to the west-southwest, and the lack of closer settlements, hazards from potential future pyroclastic flows and lava flows are unlikely to destroy any structures, and instead only damage sections of unpopulated forest, most likely within a 5-mile radius of the volcano, although further traveling hazards beyond this specified distance are possible, as shown by the debris avalanche deposits, which reached a distance of 6.8 miles or 11 kilometers to Mount Pulix west. However, ashfall during any future eruption could be sufficient to damage roofs at nearby cities during a larger event, perhaps on the same order of magnitude of the 1977 Ukunrek Mars eruption, which could contaminate the water supply at affected cities, although even a small ash emission could be sufficient to heavily disrupt regional air traffic. As a result of these hazards, the U.S. Geological Survey designated Ugashuk Pulik as a high-threat volcano. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank Alan Olson for upgrading their Patreon tier on this channel's aka Geology Hub's Patreon page.